Jeff Goldblum, and Rick Albertson. So that, yeah, this is, I mean, such a beautiful enigma. I, I mean, it's really remarkable and so painterly. I, um, I'm, I'm pretty stunned. Uh, Lorenzo Hagerman is the cinematographer. Isn't that beautiful, beautiful looking? I think so too. Right? <laughs> With uh, Amon Escalante, right? And I, yeah, yeah, he did my last film, Entertainment, too. So. How did you guys get get connected? Uh, I saw Haley Amon's uh, movie, and uh, yeah, you know, email. <laughs> <laughs> Which movie did he do uh, that you saw? Haley Amon Escalante, a Mexican. I have not seen that. Wow. And, and he did do he did Entertainment. Yeah. Uh -huh. I, I love Entertainment. Um, it's it's, uh, it's as though Tony Clifton was dropped into Zabriskie Point. Uh, Without the love yeah. on either side of that equation. Or, or any explosions. Um, so, well, I'll start with you. Like, how, how did you get pulled into this, and, and how did you begin talking with Rick? And what happened, Rick? We, through the usual channels, somebody set us up, I, I guess, right? Uh, Casting. Casting, yeah, there's some casting, probably, you know, traditional casting. Emails, some emails. Yeah, emails also. And, um, and then we met, you know, I read it and saw his other two movies, which I loved, and then we met and, and uh, I adored him and was fascinated as I kept being through the whole process, and that was it, you know, we talked about it, went through the whole script over the course, he was so generous, over the course of a couple of days we went through we spent 15 16 hours i think i'm guessing at uh, going through every page i read the whole thing and out loud and read every part and all the voices i did all the voices and uh you know started to a ask about it and ask about what what uh i loved it uh and i loved the document of the script and what he was getting at and i loved his other two movies you know uh, but uh but i had a lot of questions you know and i uh, i loved it it's, yeah. it's a really chilling Oh, thank you. Well, also due to him. And so, so what did it start for you, Rick? What? Uh, I mean, it's you know, it's loosely based on the 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 uh, more the fall than the rise of the historic figure, Dr. Walter Friedman, who uh, invented and popularized a lobotomy based on a European procedure, the lobotomy, and which went through the skull and. And, you know, uh, he had this uh, very interesting point where he, uh, this, the procedure started to come under scrutiny historically, and he sort of hit the road, and uh, uh, it felt then sort of uniquely American, particularly, uh, besides the sort of, uh, uh, the sort of efficiency and kind of like fast foodification of, 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 of medicine that, that was, that is also uniquely American in a way, uh, across a lot of areas um, and this is headlong plunge into into progress and this sort of like denial of the ramifications and uh, all the detritus and sort of this this willful kind of utopian blindness that that, that that in his lunge you know and that it was interesting and you know part of our contemporary problem too I feel the pacing is so interesting it's 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 Kind of lethargic and mm -hmm. really, I, I mean, it's I, I I I felt like hip, just hypnotized by the film. Um, and it, it 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 almost felt as though the film had been lobotomized. Yeah, no, no, I like I, I like that, and I I don't mind if people say like they've been lobotomized, even though I don't really know that. I think typically the cinematic <laughs> lobotomy is. Uh, a more a more usual nightly routine uh, than, it, than, than uh, I mean there's a lot of sort of anesthetic kind of comfort cinema the consumer cinema that sort of pacifies us and all of the events we sort of like open our vulnerability in the dark spaces of cinema or in our bedrooms or living rooms and and make ourselves vulnerable because there's a pact with the the filmmakers or the directors or the distributors or the the market that we're not going to be injured and so we open up all of our 
figuratively internal organs and we sort of just let it take us, you know? And, and, and a strange thing happens. It happened to me when I was young watching sitcoms and television, like routinely, obsessively, that I found that, that, that the, you know, the plane of the event is thinking for you and that you sort of are, are completely unengaged and totally passive, totally vulnerable. Um, and that's always sort of frightened me. So, uh, you know, part of the, the actual uh, like strategy of this is that it takes you in and it pushes you out and that there's a, you're passing over the threshold of the, of the fiction and the, and the reality and the, and the formalism and the content. And hopefully it's something that triggers in a, a, a more active cerebral and visceral kind of response or something. That's, that's the, the hope. Yeah, I was, I was really taken with austerity um, and then yeah it does it does lull you into this state and then you finally have Demi Levant like <laughs> screaming uh, uh, poetry at you I would what tell me about working with Levant and how and how that 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 came about yeah he's a bit of a, a force of nature and an in, incredibly rigorous performer he went from this you know uh, performance straight to Paris where he did uh, Beckett's Worst Word Ho as a stage play where he stood stock still for 90 minutes and he did that for six weeks every night. So, uh, uh, but you know, there's been uh, some responses that sort of assumed and I think uh, it's quite a, a you know, a, a, a compliment to him uh, that uh, it was uh, spontaneous or improvisational but it's totally scripted because uh, actually the, his monologues are much longer um, but uh, and, he, and we shot him about twice. It was a pretty rigorous schedule, and uh, he reproduced it uh, almost exactly. All of the motive and chaotic elements, all of the gestures, it was, you know, it was remarkable. Uh, yeah, he's, yeah, he's amazing. Without having rehearsed much, right? You didn't go over it with him before, together? And I speak zero French, French, and he speaks very little English, and so we had a translator. And inevitably, that we first met on, on Skype and, uh, you know, or Google uh, event or something. And there were three of us there, me, him, and the, and the translator. And we're talking for a while, and, you know, it's sort of, we sort of bonded over Antonin Artaud and Latremont and some of these, you know, chaotic, nar marginally narcissistic, kind of really exciting surrealists, and, and which has informed the character a bit. And then the translator uh, uh, square just goes black, and uh, we're we're just you know, can't speak to each other, and so we start making faces, and uh, it, and and that we found a, a bond there. <laughs> um, I, I see a lot of Artaud in in your work, um, and like in, in, especially like your brand of, of nihilism. Um, I, I, <laughs> Um, well, so I, so again, I hadn't seen this before. Uh, I hadn't even met Rick. Um, we met a couple days ago, but I'm a big fan of your work. So when you asked me to do this, I was excited to do it. Um, well, not that excited because I don't like standing in front of people. Uh, but <laughs> me either. That's why I wanted yeah. some company. You know. Jeff, um, Jeff is. <laughs> I only feel alive when I'm in front of people <laughs> being photographed. <laughs> After this, let's all go to my house and try. Yes. That's the other reason uh, I this was I was hoping you yeah. extend an invitation to, yeah. to your home. Um, <laughs> tell me about what did did you do any research into this character? Yes, yes, yes. I'm not thinking of conscientious and through uh, Rick's help I said, I don't want to re you know, recreate the wheel and what have you done and what can I look at? And, and uh, uh, there's a book, uh, is that what we read? Yeah, there's a book about uh, uh, Walter Freeman, the real Walter Freeman that we, uh, uh, I read and there's a documentary about him and then we watched several times just before we did it, some of the lobotomy stuff, you know, about him. We, could manage, we contacted a woman whose mother had been lobotomized by Walter Freeman so that that kind of thing, yeah, did all that. <laughs> but then this, of course, is a you know, jumping off, uh, poetical jumping off. So right. I'm going to stop reaching and I'm going to open this up to uh, to the audience. <laughs> this is the opening night. This is the how many how many other showings were? Was this the first showing? This is the official premiere, I think. Is this is the premiere. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If I'd have known, I would have worn a hat. The, the, uh, very good. So, so what happens after this? This is the first time it's been shown, and 
We're, uh, yeah? We just show it forever. And then we we're showing it. <laughs> Keep showing it. What a lovely theater. <laughs> Anything else you've got out of it? Because I admire you so much. What, what else, just fresh off of your experience, Anything besides the beauty of it and the, and the aesthetic of it? That uh, what do you think? What do you think of the themes of it or the idea of it? Do you think we, there was anything in that, or would it be insulting to well, say to say it out loud? Or, <laughs> or well, well, for me, it's it's uh, a study in the banality of evil, and and so, but it, but it also was touching on things that are close to me. So it was actually a very Difficult watch for me. Like what? Close to you? In what way? Just a little bit. Mental illness, right? And so. Oh yeah. Um, oh. And and so I it was a very visceral watch for me, um, oh. and touched me very deeply. But it, but in a way that I don't want to reduce to words because it, it feels very. It's like I said. It, it strikes me as an enigma. There's a lot of mystery there. And I can imagine that press will be tricky for you because I, I, I kind of don't want this to be reduced to words. I mean, I sort of been, I, 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 you know, uh, unapologetically read reviews and mostly less, less of than sort of any sort of narcissistic, uh, you know, uh, uh, reason. And I'm just, I'm, I think about audiences all the time. For all the, the last three films, I mean, it's all about sort of like a curiosity about what engages us, where we're comfortable, and, and particularly where we're comfortable, and where like constructive discomfort can come from, particularly in these vulnerable spaces where we open ourselves up to something that's typically just validating, that validates our worldview, you know? And I mean, I think a lot about social media and our hall of mirrors, and particularly, you know, uh, e e you know, very much progressives too, you know, where we're so increasingly surrounded by like like voices, and uh, you know, uh, we need to be uh, challenged and, and removed a little bit from things that make us comfortable. I think it's essential, and so much consumer cinema doesn't doesn't do that, and uh, because consumers are, are are better if they're sort of, you know, you wouldn't want them too upset, you wouldn't want them too happy. <laughs> Yeah, and I, I, there, there is a, uh, what I, I, I mean, I, one thing I really appreciate about your work is that there's this sort of unapologetic ugliness to it, and at the same time, there's this clinical quality that is, I think, really striking, and it really does not give a shit about you. <laughs> uh, it does, because you're telling me that that you're so concerned with the audience, and I, I, I I'm absolutely kind of obsessed with, with understanding how we, yeah. how we imbibe all of this content. You know, well, it's so alienating as well. I mean, can you talk about making alienating work and, and what what draws you to to work that 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 holds the audience at a remove and kind of forces them to come come to the film? Uh, you know, I think again, it comes back to this idea of like content and forming content and where our defaults for content and where our whole entire society is like in the narrative obsessions that we have the, the obsessions with intoxication of story and uh, I've you know recently become really skeptical and suspicious in light of our current political situation in a, in a big way about how how efficient the delivery mechanism of story is and that it's less about the content of story than the envelope of it, the envelope of the clarity of a perfect narrative, the beats of it. It's almost like a pop song, you know, when it hits all of those notes and, and, and we become enveloped. And if it's on our terms, we become intoxicated and nostalgic and emotional, which is a, a, a beautiful thing. But in a profoundly privileged society like ours, I wonder if that's, if we should be in a constant state of intoxication like that, you know? But if it doesn't, if it, when it, when it breaks, something else remarkable happens. And you know, that's, that's what drew, drew me to this. I mean, the films like Woman Under the Influence, which I find beautifully flawed in so many ways, and, and, and the narrative becomes dysfunctional at times, and it, and it, and it, it, it's, it correlates to the, to the dynamics of the content and the family. And, it, and you know, yeah, we, we like things very, very, with a lot of clarity now on both sides of the aisle, and, and uh, there's, a, there's something of nuance that I think is uh, being lost. Yeah. Do you know that movie, uh, Woman Under the Influence? You've seen it's, it's one of my favorite. Paul Cassavetes. Do you know that movie? No. 
So I, I read, I, just to mention in passing, I've been talking about it, I read two, a um, couple of books that kind of made, made me think, because I'm a kind of meat and potatoes thinker, and I wanted to kind of make sense of this for myself, and uh, um, I like this book by Kurt Anderson, um, Fantasyland, or How America Went Haywire, uh, which I like a lot, which has something to do with, I think, what we're talking about here. And then I'm currently reading uh, Yuval Harari's book, Sapiens and Homo Deus. Do you know those books? Are you reading them? It talks about stories and the, the uh, unifying uh, power of stories, but the uh, danger of stories, too, in con and without being able to, and in consuming stories without being able to um, distinguish uh, a reality from made-up stories. Anyway, is there anything, is there anything, I, let me ask before, I, I don't want to, is there anything that you would, are curious about from them? Because you're interested in the audience, they just saw it. Is there anything, are they, are they, I, I'm a little interested, are they disturbed, I wonder, in a yes. way that you, you intended and that's unpleasurable slash pleasurable slash awakening slash, uh, did they get an idea? But are we interested in what idea they got out of it, or ideas? Everybody or all things? at once. What do you think? <laughs> you know, you know what I mean. Creepy I know, in a good way. That they like it, but isn't it specifically surgically intended for some some experience, unusual, uncommon experience for them to have? Sure. sure yeah. Well, let's see some hands. <laughs> it's like scary. Yeah. He's asking about the, the, the ice skating. And, ice skating. Uh, in connection in what, what regard? Like why, why isn't, what? Um, well, I mean, uh, I, I, I struggle a lot with like metaphors and symbolism in film just because of its, of its convenience. But it, it, and, and it bothers me when I feel like I'm having to read a film when it's literature. Um, uh, I, I don't. I, I just really want. I want to like, experience it more, and it to be unique. And I, it, when I watch movies, but recently I realized what well, it's, it's grammar. It's the way that we're like we're our defaults are to read movies, to unpack them, and try to to, to to pull a message out. And I think part of that is so that we can feel free of it. You know, so it doesn't doesn't linger on with us and trouble us in our, our lives and stuff, um, which I think can be really healthy. But the so I mean, this is uh, there's there's a lot of like the, the, this this it's uh, there's a lot of uh, yeah, hard looks at utopia in the movie, uh, the aspirational sort of event of the American ideal that is uh, un unlimited opportunities and boundless potential, which is a, a very great starting point. But for the most privileged society in the world, uh, it starts to become destructive because it's it's uh, it, it, it's not it's not about limitations. It's not about the finite. Those things are considered negative or difficult or problematic. And uh, you know, in keeping with some of that, uh, the film's built pulling a lot of stuff in, both from Freeman's life as an architecture of something that happened during a period. You know, that the things built on and the skating part. I grew up as a figure skater. I found myself on on. On the ice, my mom had a rink. Uh, she was a president of a rink in Canada when I was six years old, and I sort of came to consciousness out on the out on the ice like a strange, strange little man. And uh, you know, uh, so that's sort of pulled from from my life. The the sort of uh, the, the this kind of isolated uh, hermetic kind of uh, you know uh, bubble of of, uh, of of strangeness. But uh, the um, uh, you know typically. Figure skating and is is is, is a, 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 you know it's, it's given feminine attributes and particularly in the in the mid in the in the, in the mid century you know so um, there's a lot about that gulf and the in the in the, the the personal toxicity of a, of the, the the masculine on on men how it is a, a, a even though that they're the, they were particularly the beneficiaries of in that era and still are um, they uh, they're they're poisoned by it and it it, it, it it's a feedback loop of uh, unrealized wholeness and access to emotion and stuff. So, I mean, it felt useful in that regard, too. So, so we, we have time for one more question, so make it, no. so it's got to be the person no. who wants to I just wanted, the most. I just wanted to add to, to, to that just a little bit, if I could, let me see, so I find him a wonderful, a brilliant filmmaker, and what I like, uh, one of the things I like is that you're so personal, and, and, and I, you know, the, it's, uh, the movie has an intended specific, Impact, but um, so much of it I find um, came is coming from his personal dream life and experience, and uh, 
secret, secret life, you know, which I, which I love and, and uh, feel. And then I'm remembering the, time, the, the, the thing you said to me about um, th this American utopian and the, the first part being a kind of a, the, the athletics, the athletic part of the American, you know, death of a salesman, trophy, uh, kitsch pageantry of skating, and then me, the, the snake oil salesman, you know, quick fix, you know, uh, uh, um, some medical, uh, you know, uh, nincompoopery, and then uh, the religious, religious madness, you know, at the end, yeah? Well, maybe that's something. Anyway, what, what's their last question? I'm just, just trying to help out. Yeah, I mean, my, you know, uh, I mean, my, you know, first, my, my sister, Katie, brought me up to New York and we saw Stalker at Film Forum when I was 17 or something, and it changed my life, you know, because it, it uh, because of all of the, the sort of the unresolved nature of it and the sort of openness of it and the haunting kind of like impact of taking that out into the street and feeling altered, but not, not altered like a hangover, altered like a, you know, a, a kind of awareness, you know. Um, but I, you know, I love Haneke and, and you know, uh, Catherine Brelliot and, and Claire Denis and uh, Bruno Dumont. I mean, that whole that whole like movement that happened how long ago was it now? 10, 15 years, 15 years ago, was important to me, and I thought was a uh, had, had a you know it was a kind of social movement in cinema. Um, so I see Dumont. I haven't seen him yet. He turned me on. I've never seen Stalker, and I've seen Stalker now since uh, we've been talking. And Bruno Dumont, I don't know any of his movies, but he said you've got to see Bruno Dumont. Yeah, I, see, I see a lot of, uh, well, more in entertainment. I see, I see like 29 Palms for sure. <laughs> oh, <great. laughs> uh, but uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Did you did it. It's horrible. It's horrible. It's horrible. It's horrible. Uh, thank you so much. For, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.